G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be reviewing the game which is between Geelong and the Western Bulldogs. This one was at Marvel and the Cats back on the winners list. Uh, winning by 22 points, getting the job done, backs to the wall, lost three in a row and looking uh, a bit brittle. But uh, uh, absolute uh, masterclass from Scotty and the boys got us over the line which was great. Um, Definitely, yeah, not a performance where you go look out, but uh, again, yeah, just good to get back on the winners list and not be potentially facing five or six losses in a row. Uh, that would have been even worse. And, and Scotty uh, still avoids and finds a way to not lose four in a row, and he has never done it uh, in his time at the Cattery, so that's really positive from him. Um, but yeah, what, what a game it was. Definitely high scoring early on in the piece. And yeah, scoring got a little bit tougher, especially on the dogs side of things as the game sort of wore on. But yeah, we could see, yeah, it was pretty high scoring early on in the piece. And yeah, we just hung in there all night. Uh, very gutsy win, big win, had to win. <laughs> and, and we found a way. So yeah, it was really positive in that front. Um, just having to yeah, find a way. And, and ultimately we did playing imperfect football it has to be said and you know clearly the, the dogs didn't take all their chances that they had up forward um they had some yeah solid looks and probably didn't use the ball going that well inside 50 then they kind of got the yips a little bit uh, which then sort of started get, going through the group as you can see there two goals eight um after half time isn't going to quite get it done uh, the Cats, seven goals, uh, yeah, 7-2 after half time. So yeah, it's kind of like the Richmond game uh, several weeks back where we were sort of like how the Dogs have scored here, inefficient, um, clunky versus, uh, yeah, efficiency and accuracy, basically. So I mean, we won off of efficiency and accuracy and real heart. Uh, if you play this game 10 times, and <laughs> I don't think you get the same result uh, 10 times over, definitely... It wouldn't always go your way, but um, yeah, Geelong ultimately were able to, yeah, put in a blue collar sort of effort, and ultimately, yeah, basically find a way to get the four points, which uh, was muchly needed. But um, yeah, we had some good looks going inside fifty. Pressure definitely lifted as the game wore on from our side of things, which was great to see. Um, yeah, our, our conversion was, was very good and we were able to lower our eyes going inside 50, which I really enjoyed. Pressure on the dogs was definitely lift up a fair bit as the game wore on and we were able to sort of, yeah, take advantage of probably some uh, silly turnovers from their side of things. But that also speaks to uh, our pressure in front half sort of pressure as well, which helped uh, turn the ball over from... Yeah, for us, and then we're able to, you know, get some good looks going back the other way, and yeah, ultimately, when you're kicking uh, straight, that it definitely helps you. You win games of football, and you know, as we can see, they're not not kicking straight, and definitely some gettable shots for the dogs. They did have some long behinds as well, but I think yeah, they they did have some yeah ones that they like again, and probably yeah would have liked to have their time again ultimately. Um, but yeah, pleased with the result. There's, there's definitely yeah some weaknesses in the game. I think we were able to close a gap a little bit in terms of just not getting absolutely blasted out of the clearances, which was probably the fear going into the game. We we're able to yeah minimise the damage again once once the game sort of um, yeah wore on. Uh, what they weren't getting super great looks. Uh, they still found targets and you know kicked kicked in on the 45, and, and they did get some pretty good movement and good looks. Uh, again, as we can see, they didn't really take uh, the most of their opportunities, uh, kicking 10-15 to our 15-7. So a couple more scoring shots in the stats definitely read positively in their favour in doing a lot right, just not quite uh, being efficient enough. But again, I suppose some, some decent work um, by the Cats being able to yeah, in, intercept and disrupt the ball movement where possible and not allow um, you know, easy shots, which we've probably been guilty of in the past. So... Yeah, handy result, much uh, timely result, that's for sure. So, yeah, blue-collar effort, uh, good result overall. Uh, definitely not, yeah, I, I don't think uh, anyone goes out of that game thinking, gee whiz, the, the Cats are back, but um, they just had to win, and they, and they did, and they go into the bye, and uh, yeah, we'll talk about that a bit later, but 
we'll look at the stats and yeah the dogs dominated uh yeah, the getting the ball <laughs> which you know they're, they're, they're pretty good at that uh, plus 76 in disposals, uh, inside 50s there, we were ultra efficient. We didn't even get 50, but when we did get inside 50, we were pretty dangerous with it. And yeah, we were hitting targets quite nicely and took a lot of our chances too. Uh, in terms of efficiency inside 50, so the dogs probably were efficient in the sense of getting scores, but probably not from the looks that they did get despite getting 57%. So that, that is my concern with the Cats in terms of when they're not scoring, when they're not winning, say, a clearance, it looks really scary going into the back line. And the back line, I think, held up relatively well, all considering. But, yeah, when teams are moving it from D50 to forward 50, it has been a bit easy at times and kind of has been like, it, unless we're winning the ball and everything's going great, it looks we look pretty ordinary down back. But... Uh, I think that's been an issue the whole year and we'll just get better as we get more personnel back and hopefully get some uh, synergy happening, but we'll see how it all goes. Hitouts, um, surprisingly we won the hitouts, uh, definitely not uh, <laughs> around the ground, English was very dominant. From the clearances side of the equation, the dogs got the job done there by two stoppages. Yeah, and I mean, the contested ball was quite amazing. They won by plus 20. And obviously, yeah, when you win the disposals by 76, you're going to have a, a bit more ball on the inside and on the outside. So on the outside, probably what's concerned us this year. And again, the dogs probably didn't make us fully pay. Uh, and, you know, they, they missed some chances that, you know, that they'd like to sort of... Uh, make into bigger scores in just the one point so yeah a lot of turnovers and, and we definitely uh, turned the ball over a bit nearly 200 marks between the team so yeah we gave them a lot of control uh, again it didn't bite us tonight it will in the future if we <laughs> play exactly this way marks and softy we've been conceding a fair bit we, we're usually pretty high on that sort of uh, stanza and normally keep teams down to 10 not on this occasion. Contestant marks is something we're usually good at, but not tonight. <laughs> uh, plus eight for the dogs. They were they were very good in the air. And they did quite well. And yeah, time in front, quite interesting. About a 50-50 sort of split there in terms of who was in front for, and for how long. Dogs air tackled as well. So yeah, they worked really hard and probably shows um, yeah, a lack of work rate from us at times. Tackles inside 50 is always, uh, we're, we're never really high on that, that uh, sheet, which is probably why it's been walked out so easily. 1% is lot, lots for the dogs, not as many for us. Yes, efficiency is definitely one assist game, that's for sure. So let's get the cats, not the dogs up. All right, let's go through the votes. So I reckon three goes to Tom Stewart. He kicked a goal, hasn't kicked a goal for... Five years, 2018 was the last time he kicked a goal. 27 disposals, 10 marks, nearly 700 metres gained. I thought, yeah, he was dynamic down back. He was repelling a lot of ball from D50 very nicely, as he does. Um, kicked a, a crucial goal for us, I think, to start the last, uh, which was muchly needed, very timely, just like everything. So, yeah, he had a bit of a blue, I think, with the 50-metre penalty to McNeil. Didn't uh, make us pay full price. But yeah, that one was a bit of a howler, but it was it was our best on the night, I felt. And then the two votes I'm going to go with, where is the man I'm looking for? It's Mark Blitzarves, he's right there, <laughs> right next to him. Uh, he kicked a goal, had the 17, also had the three marks, seven tackles, four clearances. I thought, yeah, he was just brutal, he was tough, he, he got really involved in the game. And yeah, I, I just felt like his influence around the ground was... Um, significant and he, yeah he just played a really good role for us and even though you know he didn't get 30 and he, he never will uh if he <laughs> well he, he's not the type of player to get 30 whether he has or not uh in his career uh, not not uh, not trying to uh hit mark too much but he yeah he played a really good role for us i just felt he was really tough and did some great things that maybe the stats don't necessarily say the one vote I've gone with Grind Myers, putting together a pretty good resume for season 2023. Uh, absolutely deadly kick. He kicked a goal, 20 touches, eight marks, uh, four tackles, three goal assists, absolutely clutch. Uh, we can say the next best was, was Jezza with two. Hawk might have got, got, got a couple. 
Close got a couple there. Uh, but yeah, I felt like throughout the majority of the game, he was just really invaluable for us in terms of being able to be that connector through the wing and half forward. And I mean, again, his his work there has contributed to three goals. And um, what did we win by? Yeah, three and a half goals. So uh, I felt, yeah, definitely, especially early on and throughout the game, he was yeah a big part and catalyst in terms of us being able to find a way to the scoreboard. And he's just the ultimate connector and goal assist man. And he continues his great work with the the money kick inside 50, which he loves to do and we love seeing as Cats fans. I'm going for the rest of the team. Uh, Jez had a solid evening. He kicked a couple, 21, seven marks, three tackles, two goal assists. So, yeah, I mean, he's contributed to four goals, played almost the full game. Uh, yeah, look, he prob we probably, again, didn't give him great looks uh, and didn't kick the ball perfectly to him. Also need to get some separation from the opponent. Uh, as well, but yeah, look, he, he played well, and yeah, I don't, I don't think we'd win without him, um, considering, yeah, he's, he's been involved with four goals there. Um, love the way he goes about it. Uh, Tanner Bruin had the 15. He kicked a goal, a very crucial goal. A lot of crucial goals were kicked. Uh, five marks, 12 tackles. I love that, uh, which is great to see. And yeah, from 70% game time, so yeah, tough, tough game from Tanner, and yeah. 12 tackles is an incredible effort. Didn't really notice it, to be honest. So I saw a lot of Atkins tackles, but uh, it's, a, it's a really good effort from Bruin there. I like Nevitt's game. He kicked a goal. He had the 17, seven tackles as well, and the three marks. He, he loves to pluck a mark. Two goals this as well. There's a couple of clearances. So, yeah, probably his best game for the club. Yeah, had some really good moments, some, some good marks on the wing, and yeah, kicked a, again, a goal that was really uh, crucial that we had to kick, and he did. Right on the, the halftime siren, I believe. Atkins' game was really good. Stiff not to get a vote. He had the 19, nine tackles, six clearances. He was just extracting the ball at will and, yeah, played a really good game. Isaac Smith, good run and dash from Izzy. He kicked no goals, but he got 22 disposals and he kicked 17 balls 17 times. Uh, didn't get as much media as gained this time around, but, again, yeah, he's just a... That guy sort of runs through and, and gives us, yeah, that, that run that we need and probably lack at times, especially without Holmes and, and Duncan. Tui kicked a goal. He had the 20 as well, uh, four marks, a goal assist, and possibly, if my memory serves me correct, three torpedoes. So Reg played, uh, yeah, played a solid game. He was able to, yeah, move it nicely out of the back line and, and hit up some players and, yeah, yeah, he was pretty solid down sort of uh, back in that wing position. Zach Guthrie had an interesting game, a mixed game, that's for sure. He had the 16, six marks, four tackles. Uh, even got a clearance in there. It felt like for a lot of the night, that, yeah, he struggled a little bit. I don't think Waitman really got a hold of us. So I mean, when you look at it like that, probably a decent game. Um, Waitman might have ended up with one. But yeah, um, he's definitely had some good moments late in the game. I feel like he's... He's kicking lacked a bit of confidence and, yeah, maybe maybe lacking a bit of um, continuity at the moment. But I'm sure, yeah, he'll, he'll get better as we as we get better throughout the season, I think. And, yeah, he did miss kick a few and looked a little bit rattled at times, but I'm sure he'll be, he'll be fine. Uh, Close was really good. I felt uh, his game, yeah, was significant. He kicked a goal, had the 18 next to his name, a couple of clearances in there, a few goal assists. So, yeah, he was hard at work getting involved in the midfield and, yeah, really helping us uh, with four A's forward. Segler got the seven, um, four marks. So he was okay down the line, but, um, yeah, a few clearances got uh, demolished by English. So read and start what you will. Got sucked out of the game. Uh, yeah, we, we need Stanley back, basically. Stegler's just <laughs> the only guy that we've got at the moment that, that can ruck. Um, so, yeah, yeah, clearly it's a, a bit of a deficiency and we probably are, are seeing when teams run and spread, you know, Stanley might run and spread and prevent uh, marks being taken and, you know, don't attack one guy to not, not be manning up to uh, sort of make it all fall down. I like Kyle Jasny's game. He had the 12... Six marks, a few tackles in there as well. He's a he's a good tackler, Cole, when he when he's on. Uh, yeah, he was very solid down back. I felt wasn't really yeah too worried with with uh, what was going on around him, and he just got the job done, which was which was nice. 
Tommy Hawkins, he kicked two goals, two from the 10 touches, 10 kicks for the Hawk, no handballs. Uh, he got the three marks as well. Goal assist in there for Tom. So, yeah, look, a pretty solid performance. Uh, he was a good target uh, up forward and, yeah, normally gets his teammates involved. So, yeah, he did well. Stingle got involved. He kicked a goal, got 12, uh, also got three tackles in there, three clearances. He got involved uh, at the source as well in the centre Center square, which is great to see. Um, yeah, slowly getting some better form. Mr. Sitter should have had two, but uh, we'll take one. Gary Rowan, it was good to see him back. He kicked two, had eight disposals for the game. Three marks, three tackles, which, yeah, were just uh, unbelievable. And, yeah, look, he, you, you see eight, eight disposals, but his impact on the game, he's crashing packs, he's bringing the ball to ground, he's applying tackles inside 50 that lead into goals and just outside 50 that gets turned over and end up in, in goals. So, yeah, he's... He's really important uh, when you don't see him out there versus when he's in. Uh, significant. He hasn't been, he hasn't played for the last month and we haven't won. It's good to have Chucky back. Ollie Henry had a almost game, uh, nine touches, kicked a goal, nice snap from Ollie, and a few tackles in there, a few marks. Relatively quiet, uh, a couple of left foot nightmares, but uh, you know that, that happens. Buse worked into the game well. He got the 14 uh, in the end, four marks. Uh, yeah, a bit of a quiet start, but he worked his way into it. And yeah, he, he generally takes the game on and works out well for us. Jack Henry uh, played well. He Whilst he had the eight and four marks, uh, he was able to keep yeah, Norton pretty quiet. And I think that was who he was playing on. <laughs> Uh, someone was playing on Norton, and Norton kicked one, and I don't think anyone absolutely destroyed us uh, in terms of the, the key tolls. Uh, Eugle Hagen had some good marks and good moments, but um, didn't, yeah, I think he might have kicked one three. De Koning uh, had the 10 touches, that's usually what, what uh, DK gets. Uh, three marks, and a few spoils in there as well. Again, sort of like Guthrie, lacking a little bit of confidence at the moment and we'll definitely get better as the season goes on and once we get uh, rid of that mask I think we'll be looking great uh, O'Connor was quiet had the 10 uh, had a bit of the ball a few clearances I think probably playing on a accountable role on Bonson Pelly at times and yeah so he, he provides um, an additional option for us in that midfield and half back when we need uh, some extra numbers in there uh, O'Shane Mullen his second game of football, he had the 10 touches under a bit of pressure throughout the night in terms of the, he seemed to be constantly getting tackled at the moment. He's trying to get rid of it, a couple of tackles. Um, will be definitely better for the run and yeah, no, he can definitely launch the footy, that's for sure. Uh, Simpson came on as a sub, didn't play too much game time, ended up with the four, oh no, sorry, the two touches there, a uh, couple of handballs and yeah, definitely he jumped on very late in the game and got, got involved in a couple of passages as we can see there. All right, so that is the game right there. So we can't lose next week because we've got the buy with the Gold Coast Suns. But what we do have the week after is we've got Port Adelaide over there on the Thursday at Adelaide Oval. Going to be an ultra tough game. I, I suspect Port probably win this. Um, I did also suspect, suspect that the Dogs were going to win uh, as well, and that, that didn't quite happen. Uh, but yeah, Port in the form that they're in at the moment, uh, they're looking very deadly. And I think last year when we were, you know, on that uh, 16 game, or well, going towards that 16 game winning streak, we played over there. And whilst we did get out to a six, seven goal lead, probably think it was about yeah 37 points. Uh, was definitely for some Port mistakes, and they weren't quite at their best and we we're probably gearing towards our best. Uh, we're not that team that we were last year right at the moment and they're better than they were last year and they're playing over there. So that, therefore, I think Port will get the chocolates um, in what's going to be yeah, a, a brutal game. Paddy will be back. Uh, hopefully get Stanley back after the bye. Hopefully get a few players back and some continuity. And then we'll be looking a bit better. But yeah, I think we've got Melbourne after that. Another Thursday night game. So... Yeah, just need to win one out of those two and uh, all, all should be okay. But yeah, it's uh, a lot to play out, that's for sure. But 
uh, as far as tonight goes, yeah, the Cats got the job done by 22 points. Uh, they avoid the four losses in a row, which was looking, yeah, very uh, menacing and uh, potentially likely at stages. And the Doggies didn't really kick that straight, didn't really take their chances. We were pretty deadly when we were able to move the ball up four, which has probably been a bit of a struggle um, in the last three, four weeks. So to get that bit right tonight was good. There's definitely some areas to improve in. There's definitely some deficiencies uh, in our game and we're clearly not playing our best footy and that footy that we played tonight definitely won't uh, cut it with the best teams sometimes all you can do is just rock up support and and just get the wins and try and um yeah just stay head above water in terms of the win loss and get the players back and, and be looking good uh yeah come the pointy end of the season so Go Cats, good win. Um, that'll, that'll do us, I reckon, as my voice decides to die right at the very end. But uh, guys, I appreciate you joining in to the review. Uh, give it a like if you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe to stay up to date with all the Cats reviews, all tips, videos, all that amazing stuff. And uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in once again. Thank you all. I'll see you all on the next video.